everyone, this is Yana Smakula for SimonSaysTM.com and thanks for joining me today. Welcome to another episode from my bi-monthly Yippee for Yana video series. In today's episode, I'm sharing a masculine Valentine's Day card featuring several Spellbinders dies. I want to incorporate a galaxy background into my card as I feel like galaxy prints are not going away anytime soon and are still hugely popular. Heck, I want to have a galaxy wall painted in our apartment. So I'm going to start by watercoloring a simple galaxy background. I've shared several videos in the past showing how to watercolor a galaxy, so I'm not going to focus on this part much in today's video, but I will walk you through the process in case you're new to watercoloring a galaxy background. I have a hard board here. I'll use it to tape my watercolor piece onto this board, and it's helpful to have some sort of a surface that you can lift up easily and that you can apply heat to without the fear of ruining that surface. So a cutting mat is not a good surface, it's not a good idea to use it, but inexpensive board like this is perfect. I have a sheet of Arches hot pressed watercolor paper here. I love this paper for all things watercolor. I'm going to tape my paper onto the board. I use any low tech tape for this that I can find. In this case, I'm using my old washi tape and taping the paper onto the board helps it to stay as flat as possible. I'll be adding lots of water here, so I need to make sure that my paper is not going to warp too much. To paint my galaxy, I'm going to use Daniel Smith watercolors. Here I have an exclusive Daniel Smith watercolor dot chart. This chart features 18 of my favorite colors to color with, and I'm going to use several colors from here to paint the galaxy. Indigo, lunar blue, and ultramarine turquoise. I have my watercolors set up in a palette, so I'm going to use them from there. But you can also use watercolors from the dot chart. There's enough watercolor there to paint a background like this. I plan to cut several items from my galaxy background using my dies. So I simply planned for my galaxy background to be slightly larger than the dies that I plan to use to make sure I'll have enough background to cut from. I've started painting by wetting the entire surface of my paper with water. I used a large flat brush for this, and I'm now using my round black velvet brush number eight to add color to this background. I'm going to speed this part up. I first added indigo around the edges, letting the water carry the pigment towards the center of my panel, and also added the same color onto three sections, again, letting the water distribute the color. You want to pre-vet your paper so that the color you drop onto the paper doesn't just sit there. You want it to move and interact with other colors. I'm also adding Lunar Blue. This is another color I use very often, especially for galaxies. And finally, I'm adding Ultramarine Turquoise here. I'm going to come back and add more Indigo and more Lunar Blue until I'm happy with my background. Really, you can use other colors to watercolor a galaxy. You can easily add a light or a dark purple, light blue, pink, and even black. I personally love blue, indigo especially, so this is why I picked these colors for my galaxy today. Next, to speed things up, I'm using my heat tool. You can let this piece air dry, but why wait? So I'm just making sure that my background is completely dry, and there's the benefit of using this board. I don't have to be afraid of melting my work surface when I'm heat setting my background. Now to add white, which will mimic stars, I'm going to use white acrylic paint. I've added a little bit onto the clear block and going to use a smaller round brush number four to pick up some of that paint. My brush is wet and I will add it onto my galaxy. I'm just tapping on the brush with my finger to create little splatter. Now I love the way that Christina Werner adds splatter to her watercolor paintings. It's much more controlled way and the white paint doesn't get everywhere on your desk, but I'm yet to be successful adding it uh, like that to my background uh, paintings. So I just keep on tapping on my brush to add white stars onto my galaxy. Finally, I want to add some shimmer, well, lots of shimmer. So I'm going to use Distress Mica Spray and Brushed Pewter. You need to shake the bottle to get the shimmer mixed with the liquid. And I'm going to spray my background generously. Again, I'm using my heat tool to dry this piece and finish working on my galaxy background. Here's what it looks like, lots of shimmer. And the best part is that this shimmer doesn't come off. It's permanently set there. Here's, by the way, another galaxy background that I painted earlier, some weeks ago. 
I used rough watercolor paper for this and added some more white. There's also a little bit of gold there too, so you can see how different these two galaxies look. I'm using several dies from Spellbinders to do my die getting today and to cut elements out for my card. I have the dies I planned to use sitting on my main attraction. It's a pretty magnet that is also a desk accessory and it helps you to keep your loose dies in one place. It's helpful to have one on your desk as you're working with multiple dies to keep them all in one place and also to search for them and pick them up from your messy desk area. I have one of those in my bathroom as well and I use it to keep all of my hairpins together. So I'm going to use Spellbinders Near or Far stamp and die set. There are sentiment stamps that go together with this map of the United States, but I'm just using the map today, the map die, and I love that this map has two pieces to it. There's an actual map and a matte layer to it. I'm going to cut the actual map out of the galaxy paper that we just created, and I'm also going to die cut a love letter from the love letter die set from Spellbinders out of this paper. And this die is actually a solid die that adds debossing onto your paper. In other words, it pushes the paper in instead of pushing it out, like with the embossing. And finally, I'm going to die cut several little hearts. These are also from the near or far set. I'm taping my dies down onto my paper to make sure they do not move and cut exactly where I've placed them. And I always do this. This just saves me a lot of time and frustration in paper. To die cut the matte piece of the map, I'm using new glitter paper from Simon Says Stamp. This is fantastic paper as the glitter doesn't come off and the paper is die cuttable. I'm using black glitter today, although Simon has lots of different colors of this glitter paper. I also want to die cut an envelope for this and I'm using fabulous burnished rose paper from Tonic Studios. I'm going to set up my die cutting machine and we'll go ahead and die cut those out. I'm using my Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine from Spellbinders. I also have a larger Platinum machine sitting off to the side, and that's the machine that I usually use. But the larger machine doesn't fit in my video frame, so I'm using a smaller machine on video. Although both machines are equally good. The machine comes with a platform, and on that platform you have a cheat sheet that tells you exactly how you need to position the plates to cut or emboss. It's very helpful and you don't have to check the machine's manual all the time to make sure you're arranging your plates the correct way. So I'm going to send all of my pieces through the machine to cut. Here I have the love letter with a fabulous debossing. I just love the way it turned out. And I love that it added detail to this piece. You know, it's not just a rectangle, but it really does look like a mini love letter. Here's my map, all nice and cut, and not a single problem die cutting this glitter paper. And then there's the rose gold envelope. Now I'm using my tool in one here to push the die cut through the die to help me get it out. And I use this tool all the time when I'm die cutting. It's also very helpful for cleaning your dies from the negative die cut pieces. Now what's awesome about this envelope is that it's designed in such a way that there is a slit that lets you insert the letter through. So it looks like you have assembled the envelope and here I have the letter peeking from the inside when all you did really was just cut it out. There's no assembly needed and I really love clever dies like this. Now the map die cut can be embossed and you can see there's a little bit of the metal edge to the cut edge. This is indicative that you can emboss with this Spellbinders die. I'm going to place my die cut back into the die. I will tip it in place just in case and we'll send it through the machine to emboss. And here you can see that nice edge that added to this die cut. It's just another little detail that makes this piece unique. I've die cut some more little hearts for my card and that finished, almost finished, the die cutting part of this video. I'll go back to my die cutting machine one more time. It's time to assemble the pieces. I'm going to use this fabulous wood grain paper from Hero Arts. I love it for all things clean and simple. And Simon also has this paper in their store from the Simon brand and from other manufacturers as well. It really is fantastic paper for simple cards with lots of white space. I want to foam mount my map galaxy die cut onto the glitter die cut, but I want to use a solid layer of foam adhesive. So to do that, I'm going to add double-sided sticky sheets onto the front and back of a sheet of a fun foam and we'll die cut the map once again out of this fun foam piece. 
Obviously, you can use foam adhesive here, but I like to pop things up on my projects with a solid layer of fun foam. So this is why I'm creating this additional layer of fun foam to pop my die cut. The trick here is to use thin adhesive like these adhesive sheets from Scrapbook Adhesives, or you can also use Stick It adhesive from Ken Oliver. And I'm also using regular white fun foam. You can see I cut it no problem in my die cutting machine using the map die. And I've cut fun foam like this with adhesive on both sides using even very detailed and intricate dies and I never have any problems. I'm going to adhere the galaxy map onto the fun foam map and this is why I added the adhesive to this piece so that I'm able to easily adhere things together. I honestly don't like to fuss around with glue when I work with these kind of things. And I'm going to adhere this onto the glitter map and we'll adhere the entire piece onto the wood grain panel. I want to next layer an envelope with the love letter inside, but before I do that, I want to add black writing to the debossed area. So I'm just using a black pen and outlining that debossed section on this letter die cut. I don't have to freehand anything. I'm just placing my pen into the groove and coloring the debossed section in black. You can also color it white or gold or silver or any color, any color really. I'm going to insert my letter into the envelope and we'll foam mount both onto the card. Now I need to work on a sentiment for this project and I want to heat emboss Be Mine from the new stamp set from Hero Arts. It's from their Valentine's Day release. And I also want to heat emboss Please Deliver by February 14th. And this message comes from an older uh, stamp set from Hero Arts. I'm heat embossing both of these in white embossing powder onto black cardstock strips. This kind of card can be a long distance Valentine's Day card for a guy, or it can be just a Valentine's Day card. And the map of the United States can signify that the letter is being delivered by post. Even though I have a lot of shimmer, and even though I used glitter for this card, it works well for a guy card, I think. So I've heat embossed my messages and I'm now adhering the little die cut hearts onto the panel above and below the map and we'll use black foam tape to foam mount the sentiments onto the card. Finally, I adhered my panel onto A2 side folding card base made out of white paper and that finished this project. Now as a variation of this design, you can also die cut a door and hide a secret message on your card. Here I have the exact same card design, but the map of the United States opens up and reveals a hidden message. Now here's how you can make this. Before adhering the map onto the background panel, die cut an identical map in the panel, but make a partial cut. Here I'm placing my top cutting plate onto the panel just partially, not all the way. I'm not covering the entire die cut. And by doing so, I'm forcing my machine to make a partial cut only. Where the plate is not covering the die cut, the die will not cut and therefore my die cut map will remain attached onto the card or onto this panel. Next, I'm using my scoring board and adding a score line to make it easier for this map piece to fold open. And here I heat emboss that secret message on the black card stuck panel. I adhere this panel so that you can see the message when you open the map. And then we'll adhere this piece onto the card base. And here is what this other card idea looks like. So this finishes this video. I hope you will give this idea a try. If you do, please tag Simon Says Stamp and me on social media so we can take a peek at your projects. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye!